Okay, and here is the Rolex that we're going to be uh, repairing and servicing in this video. And as you can see, it's had a little accident. The uh, glass um, crystal there has been shattered at about the five o'clock <laughs> position, quite why I'm pointing that out. I don't know, because it's pretty obvious. I have also put it on the time grapher and it is losing about 20 seconds a day in pretty much all of the positions. So, um, you know, this is a really, really lovely watch and we need to sort it out. So uh, we're going to do a full service on this watch and a regulation and also replace the crystal. And that is what this video is about. Let's do that now. Um, very, very nice. You can feel the tension on the clutch there. Pushing that so that's great. So what we're going to do now is just watch the keyless works as they operate. What I'm going to do now is pull it out one click. Okay, so I've taken the watch to the watch bench now and I've just removed the bracelet in the normal way. There's nothing, you know, it's just a, a normal uh, spring bar um, to remove the bracelet. So done that and now we're going to take the case back off. Okay, so the back opening uh, tool now is properly engaged and you can see here that there's there's no real gap between the case back and this part of the tool which does the removal. What we're going to do now is we're going to stick a bar in through this hole and use it to torque the back off. I'm just going to try and pan out here a little bit of that's in and out to do that. Just come into there. Okay, so we're just going to put in the bar that helps us give a little bit of torque. Holding the watch firmly, we're going to just turn the tool like that. And it's just the first bit of um, torque that will give you the major bit of tension. Just ease that round a little bit more like that. You'll kind of feel it go loose. Once it's done that, you're good. You can now just lift this up. Okay, and the back is, we can then take it out then and release the rest of it by hand. So just gonna do that now. Okay, so I've removed the back now um, by hand and you can see just that little bit of movement that we've uh, given the watch has put some power on the mainspring and you know, the balance is going there. Um, now what we've got to do is remove the stem uh, and then we can uh, remove the movement from the case. So the stem is released by uh, pushing on this button here. Okay, so we're just going to do that now. Okay, to release the movement, there are two uh, movement retention screws. Um, there is one here and the other one is around here. You just have to release the tension off those and then you can just slide the movement around. So I'm just gonna do that now. And then you can see that they come in to a part of the case where you can just flip the movement over and lift it up. And the movement will come out along with the dial and hands, which is great. What we're gonna to need to do now is pop the uh, stem back in so that we can set the hands for removing the hands. Now we're just going to lay a piece of plastic uh, over the top of the dial to protect it as we use the hand levers to come in and remove the hands. Everything nice and gentle. 
just get them right underneath them and use the lever action to pop them up okay there we go what we can do now is just remove that and then tip these off to one side so the dial on this model is uh, doesn't have any retention screws it's just a friction fit so what we're going to do now is get a, a very fine screwdriver and just uh, lever up the dial on the case Okay, pretty much like that, and that should just come away like it does. Okay, and now we expose, as you can see, let's focus on that. Um, my dog downstairs has something to say about this now. <laughs> and let's just spin that round, and there we have um, the calendar works. And on this side, we have the uh, main part, the movement. So what we're going to do now is put this in the movement stand and crack on with the service proper. OK, so there are a number of ways in which you can tackle this, but um, my preferred way is always to uh, remove the balance as soon as possible. Um, because balance is the most delicate part of the mechanism and um, so I'm going to get down to the balance first and once I've removed the balance then I will flip the movement over and uh, tackle the calendar works on the other side and then flip it back over and finish the disassembly. Uh, first thing we've got to do is remove the rotor arm um, and there is a little, this is the rotor arm here and there is a little catch on this movement here and what you have to do is get a very tiny uh, screwdriver, pop that down and release the rotor arm. So just going to do that now. Okay, so we've uh, done that and you can see the rotor arm is released there, so that's good. So okay, so the next thing we're going to remove is the automatic works um, in their entirety. And uh, they are held down by these two screws here so with the right size screwdriver we're just going to come in and do that now and just placing all the parts together mm -hmm. so you should always keep the screws with the right parts that they secure down on the movement and now we can just lift just lift the automatic works up it's gently free so just lift them away. Okay. We'll dis we'll disassemble these in a moment. Okay, and now we're down onto the train, um, and we have clear access to the balance. So um, that is the next thing that we are going to remove. remove. like to pop the balance first when I take it off onto a piece of foam like this just to protect it and a piece of foam with a little bit of just popping the balance off there gently and then placing it over the hole there's no tension on any part of the balance 
we'll just remove that and place it under something solid so that it can't get damaged. So we've spun the movement over now and we're looking at the calendar works side and um, the first thing that we're going to have to remove is this little clip here which is holding down the calendar works. Now um, it has this very beautiful uh, jeweled um, surround to it and we don't want to scratch that so we're just going to uh, lay some more uh, polythene over it while we get a tool in there and uh, just gently ease that off. Essentially there's a little gap um, at the back of the spring clip and so if you just uh, cover it in polythene get a little screwdriver in and push that upwards it should come free reasonably straightforwardly um, so just lift that off now that's all nicely protected okay so that is the calendar wheel and the little clip removed and um, be very careful as I say use the plastic when you do it so that you don't actually scratch anything and you can see now what that reveals on this side of the movement Okay, well we've got the movement down into uh, this particular state of disassembly. Um, it's worth having a quick look at how the uh, keyless works operates here. So with the uh, stem fully pushed in, you know this would be pushed in and screwed down now. Uh, we've still got a little bit of play on the um, crown there because this would normally of course be pushed in. Um, so the travel that you've got on there is equivalent to the amount um, of travel you need to screw the crown in. But in this position, uh, so it's with the crown as if we just unscrewed it and it's popped out, um, what we can do is wind the watch. And as you can see there, you can just hear that rather winding away there. Um, very, very nice. You can feel the tension on the clutch there being pushed back by the keyless work so that's great so what we're going to do now and if you just watch the keyless works as they operate what i'm going to do now is pull it out one click okay one and you saw some of the levers shift there what that does now is that transfers power onto the date wheel okay now we've removed the date wheel but you can see those little intermediate wheels there um, which would be uh, pushing the date wheel around um, and this little spring here which is the sort of date wheel jumper spring there that would be causing it to um, uh, flick from one date to the other and then of course if we pull the crown all the way out okay and again you'll see those levers change in the keyless works is what they're for and then we can set the time in either direction on the hands there okay so all of that is working very very nicely and when you put the watch back together it's at this point when you get to this part in the um, assembly of it that you want to check that um, you seriously don't want to leave it till you've got the dial back on and everything to find out that you know there is a little bit of a problem with the keyless works here but all of that is looking very 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 nice so um, that's good we will now flip the movement over and move on so we're going to be working on the powertrain now um, and when you're working on the powertrain the first thing that you must always ensure that you do is uh, release any tension that's on the mainspring and um, the click on this 2135 movement is pretty standard uh, the click mechanism uh, is here just coming in with a screwdriver uh, that is the click there and the little click spring um, so what we're going to do is uh, wind the watch and just uh, whilst holding the crown so that you you're holding the tension on the spring um, we can just push this to one side and release any tension that is on the spring so we're just going to do that now and just letting the tension mm -hmm. down gently on the spring there just letting it go through your fingers until it's completely 
unwound. You know, just letting that slip through my fingers there. And there's not that much on it, but don't be tempted to rush anything. Just let that tension go, which actually in life is not a bad mantra. Okay, so there's no tension now on the spring. We can release the click and um, continue now with the disassembly of the powertrain. Um, and we are going to start with the barrel bridge. So that is the two screws out now from the barrel bridge. So we're just going to lever that up now and remove it. But we need to bear in mind that the um, click is still attached to it. So um, we need to be careful of the click spring that's underneath it. We don't want anything flying across the room. So you'll find just underneath in this location, about here, I don't know if that's on the shot, just a little place which Rolex have uh, helpfully left somewhere where you can get a screwdriver blade in just to and then tilt it up like that and then just gently lifting the bridge up there you can see those nice jewels on it we've got a we've actually got a jewel for the mainspring barrel itself there just flipping that over now Resting that on top, just to take a look at the underside of that. Okay, so this is the underside of the barrel bridge, and um, I'm going to dismantle this in a minute, but I'm not actually going to film it. You can see it is a bit gunky, so it does need a good clean, um, and uh, you know that's why we're doing the service. Um, the key thing in here, everything is really straightforward, apart from the. Uh, let's see if I can get a pointer in here. Apart from uh, this, let's try and get that in focus. This running along here is the click spring. Okay, now actually if you want to be super safe with this, and it's probably a good idea to be, um, when you take off the barrel bridge, you can actually leave the click in place. Um, uh, and I guess there's a, there's a greater chance of the spring still being there. So um, it's probably not a bad idea to do that. Um, but, uh, before we put this in the ultrasonic cleaner this needs to be removed uh, when you do it uh, you need to make sure that you've got a bit of peg wood over it or that you use two sets of um, tweezers or whatever you want to do you can even lay a piece of rodico over it as you release it um, seriously you know um, you don't want to lose one of these it's just a ball ache for want of a better word. Um, uh, the other thing to notice on here is the, let's see if I can get my pointer back in there, hang on. Uh, yeah, the other thing to notice on here is this screw here. Uh, this, as you can see, has three stripes on it. That means it screws down in the uh, opposite direction than normal. So whenever you see that, don't try and release that anti-clockwise um, and then get cross with it and, and, and because it's not coming out because if you do that, you're actually driving it in and you'll strip off the thread if you're not careful. So that's something to bear in mind there. Um, so I'm gonna dismantle this now um, and then we'll get on to the rest of the powertrain. And here is then the barrel bridge disassembled completely and ready to go into the ultrasonic cleaner. So um, we have all the parts there. So that is good. Let's move on. The next thing that we got to do is just remove the ratchet wheel, which is uh, this wheel here. Very, very simple. Let's do that. And then uh, with, without taking the barrel with it. And so the next thing to come out is the train bridge. And I do have to say... Uh, that this is a nice little train bridge here. Um, we've only got three pivots uh, to relocate when we put it back um, and it all looks pretty accessible. So thank you Rolex for that. Um, so this is held in by uh, these two screws here. We've got a screw here and a screw here. So we're just going to uh, undo those now and remove the train bridge. Keep that on shot. He 
Interestingly, that screw was not on very firmly, nor actually was that on firm enough, but it wasn't torqued down massively, which is a bit of a surprise. Here we are. Okay, so we'll just actually use the right tweezers for this. And everything, as I always say, nice and gentle and nice and slow. Okay, so those are the um, retaining screws. Rolex have left us a nice little gap for levering this off. They are very nice to their watchmakers. Rolex, we like, we like them for that. And I do have to say, you know, as I work on this movement. God, I love Rolex. I mean, it's just gorgeous. Just gently pick it up. And there is the train bridge. Okay. And it's just the part of the movement that locates the pivots for the main powertrain, which you can now see here. Okay. So these wheels are going to be the next thing that we remove now. So what we're going to do now is take out the minute pinion bridge, which is this bridge across here with this single jewel in it. So let's do that. Okay, and just take those screws away. Always keep the screws that hold down the component with that component throughout the servicing, or you, I call it screw discipline. Um, and uh, if your screw discipline is poor, you will find you'll be in a world of hurt when you come to put the watch back together again and there is the uh, minute wheel pinion uh, bridge taken off there and put with its two screws. Okay so that gives us access now down in to um, the escape wheel and before we take the escape wheel off I am actually just going to remove the pallet fork bridge which is here um, a Rolex here have done a really good job on this bridge I mean this a lot of these bridges are, aren't, aren't actually bridges they're cocks um, in the sense that they you know just come out with one screw um, uh, and, and present a jewel for the pallets but Rolex have put in a very chunky bridge here and it's sensible design because um, you know the pallets are if not the key one of the really key bits of the escapement so you really want to make sure that they're held firmly in place and just now selecting an appropriate screwdriver for this and we're going to come in and take this off Okay, and there's quite a lot of tension on that screw as well. The pallet fork on this Rolex 2135 is really not going anywhere until I have just liberated it now. Okay. So. Okay, if the screw isn't ready to come out, you just have to give it a little bit more turning. It needs to be completely ready 
before you lift it out. And that's good. Okay, there we are. So, just keep trying to keep this in the shot. Okay. And this is the, just get that back in focus. This is the way then to approach this particular bridge. Just under here, very gently lift it up. Okay, that's good. And put it with its two screws over here. Okay, which exposes the pallet fork and the escape wheel there really nicely. And for those of you um, that, that aren't familiar with those, um, these are the pallets here. This is the pallet fork and this is the escape wheel. So we are very carefully now just going to lift off the escape wheel, which is the last wheel in the powertrain. And likewise, lift out very gently Looks like the pallet fork, which is nice. Okay, so we're now getting near to um, uh, finishing this side of the movement. Uh, just one or two more components to do. Okay, so with the lights back on now, um, movement looking nice and shiny. Um, that's pretty much it for this side of the movement. Uh, the only thing we've got to do is uh, take out this uh, brass component here which is the balance stop. So just, that just lifts out gently. And it's pretty obvious where it goes back in because it's shaped in a particular manner, but just put it with the other components and you're good, right? We are gonna flip the uh, movement over and tackle the calendar works now. Okay, back on the uh, calendar works and the keyless works side of the movement and um, as we go through this, we do need to be a little bit careful because this is the side of the movements where some of the um, uh, tiny little springs uh, reside and it's really, really boring um, when one of those pings across the room. So we just want to be careful as we, we do that. We just want to note where they are. Um, there is one here, this part of the movement here, tucked under this uh, screw there. And there is another here, which is um, key to the operation of the keyless works and um, has the job of pushing the clutch back um, so that you can wind the watch in the first position. So yeah, we're just going to uh, start now with uh, the spring here, which is the one that uh, keeps the date wheel. Um, this is a date wheel jumper spring here. So we'll start with that.
Okay, and this this component is the setting lever, and Rolex have done a really nice job on this. Um, uh, a lot of Seiko movements have the sort of pillar that you can see there separate, and um, can be a bit of a nightmare because you can lose it really quickly if you're not switched on. But this all comes out as one piece. So again, thank you, uh, Rolex, for that. So there we are. The only thing we have to strip down now is the automatic works, which as you remember, I took out as a full assembly. So we're just gonna have a little concentration now on the automatic works, and then we'll go through all of the components of this really fabulous movement by Rolex. And there we are, those are the major components of the automatic works. Now that we've done that, uh, we can put those together with the rest of the components and just take a look at all the components of this really lovely movement by Rolex. And once we've done that, I'm going to um, uh, pop most of the components, not all of them, but most of them in the ultrasonic cleaner. And uh, then we will do part two of this video, which is the reassembly of the movement um, and the replacement of the crystal. So let's have a look at the whole movement stripped down now. Okay, so here are all the parts now of this Rolex 2135 movement laid out so that we can go through them. And let's start at the top left here with this component. This is the rotor wheel and then moving on to the main plate and it's two retention screws. And here we've got the ratchet wheel, the click spring, the click and the click retention screw there. This, um, we went through this in some detail here. Uh, let's just come in on that a little bit closer. Here we've got the two reversing wheels of the automatic movement. Uh, we've got the main drive wheel and uh, the automatic device bridge here. Um, coming on to the barrel bridge and uh, the associated wheels um, that form part of the uh, barrel bridge mechanism there. And coming down here, we've got the train bridge and it's two retention screws. We've got the mainspring barrel uh, with the barrel arbor in the middle and the mainspring, and then the mainspring lid here. Then we have the powertrain, um, second wheel, third wheel, fourth wheel, escape wheel. Uh, we've got the minute wheel here and the hour wheel. We've got the balance stop. We've got the minute wheel pinion bridge and it's two uh, retaining screws. Here we've got the calendar wheel and uh, the unlocking uh, yoke cam here and uh, moving then down to here. These are all the keyless works from here to here, this lot here. This is all the keyless works. This is the setting lever here. This is the driving pinion and this is the clutch. Um, oh no, it isn't actually. That is the um, that is the winding pinion and that is the clutch and that is the intermediate wheel. Um, and uh, here we have the pallet fork, uh, the pallet fork bridge and the two screws. We've got a stem and a crown and we've got, let's just see if I can actually focus on that. Um, a little bit better, that's better. The uh, the date wheel here and its retention grip and its jumper spring. We've got hands, hour, minute and second. And then just moving over here, nicely protected, uh, we have the balance in there. 
And then coming down here, um, last uh, row, we've got the dial, uh, the top of the case with the crystal, the cyclops, the bezel, uh, the pendant tube, the case, these are the lugs. Um, and we've got the case back and the gasket. And uh, yeah, that is about it. So, so look out for part two of this video where I am going to put all of these components back together and get the watch uh, up and running and nicely regulated. So that's it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. And please subscribe to my videos. I'm making a lot of content at the moment. Uh, so there's lots more videos coming your direction uh, very soon. If you hit that subscribe button and hit the bell as well, there's a little bell icon down there, which uh, will enable you to have an alert every time that I post a video. But that's all I've got for you for the moment. So from the watch bench here in Pembroke Dock, cheerio and God bless.